In this webinar, we will learn about various practices related to the skin care of neonates. Skin is an important layer of natural defense which prevents the entry of microorganisms in the body. The skin of premature neonate is immature in immediate postnatal life. Hence, it can easily be damaged while handling the baby and during procedures. Once the skin is damaged, the microbes can easily enter the body, thus increases the chances of neonatal sepsis. Therefore, it is important to recognize potentially beneficial as well as harmful interventions which can affect the skin integrity so as to optimize the outcomes and reduce the chances of infections. We will learn about various practices related to the skin care of neonates which are performed in immediate postnatal life. These practices include care of umbilical cord, care of the nappy area. We shall also understand the role of vernix caseosa, role of bathing, role of emollients and finally care during application of adhesives. After birth, the devitalized umbilical cord can be substrate for bacterial growth and may lead to omphalitis and neonatal sepsis. However, studies have shown that the application of antibacterial substances to the umbilical cord in hospital settings does not reduce the chance of neonatal sepsis or mortality. Therefore, the stump of the cord should be left dry in hospital setting and nothing should be applied over it. If umbilical stump is soiled, then it should be washed with clean water and kept dry. Additionally, nappy should be always placed below the cord. Diaper area is moist and is therefore prone to maceration. Moreover, it is frequently exposed to microorganisms. Therefore, it is important to keep the area dry. The nappy should have good absorbent properties. Mothers should be advised to frequently change nappies at least once in 4 hours. The skin should be dried and aired between the nappy changes. Soil diapers area should be cleaned with warm water and soft cotton cloth. Nappy area should be wiped from front to back so as to prevent soiling of the urinary orifices with the fecal flora. In presence of napkin rash, emollients like petrolatum jelly or zinc oxide containing paste can be applied. Vernix caseosa is a natural lipid rich substance adhered to skin at the time of birth. It is shed automatically from the skin in first 24 to 48 hours after birth. In first 1 to 2 days, it prevents water loss from the skin and thus helps in temperature regulation. It might also have a role in immune protection of the neonate. As it is slugly adhered to skin, any attempt to remove vernix forcibly might cause damage to the superficial layers of the skin which increases the chance of microbial invasion through the cracked skin. Therefore, no attempt should be done to remove vernix from the skin. Fetus is surrounded by sterile amniotic fluid and thus does not require bathing in immediate postnatal life. It has been seen that the bathing in hospital or health facilities increases the chance of neonatal infections. Therefore, bathing of neonates should be avoided in SNCUs and in hospitals. When bathing is done by caregivers at home, one should ensure that the room is warm, there should not be any drafts of air, use warm water for bathing, after bathing quickly dry the baby including armpits and groin area, then dress the baby. Very premature and moderately premature neonates who continue to stay in special care newborn units should be sponged with lukewarm water once they are stable. Oil application in preterm neonates is shown to decrease transepidermal water loss and improves weight gain. In Indian scenarios, vegetable oils like coconut oil, sunflower oil are used for baby massage for emollient action. Mustard oil can cause contact dermatitis, hence it should be avoided in neonates. However, oil application should be avoided in extremely low birth weight neonates in the first week of life due to extremely fragile skin. While doing procedures or during skin preparation, we should avoid putting excessive pressures or vigorous rubbing as it may damage the skin which increases the chance of infections. For fixing temperature probes, IV cannula, feeding tubes, 
A semi permeable dressing for example, tagadum should be used as a base over which further adhesives can be applied. Bulky dressings should be avoided as they may cause skin damage during removal. To minimize skin trauma during removal of adhesives, they should be moistened by applying warm saline soaked cotton balls for 10 minutes so that they can be easily removed. Use only gel electrodes for preterm neonates as they are more skin friendly. To summarize, in this webinar we have learned about that cord should be kept dry and nothing should be applied over it, diaper area should be kept dry, wiped gently when soiled, emollient should be applied if the area is macerated, vernix caseosa should not be forcibly removed from the skin, bathing should be avoided in hospital settings and sponging should be done instead. Coconut oil can be applied for massage in healthy low birth weight neonates. Semi permeable dressings should be used as a base while applying adhesives to a neonate and bulky dressing should be avoided. Thank you.